you found the skeleton, how would you tell people that You first, first, first. How would you tell them? Well, interesting question. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure it's this. All right, and we are live with Vandalia 1998, and I want to say hello to everyone yep. in chat. Oh, uh, this chat. yes, this is a leading old Earth creationism, and so um, Vandalia 1998, why don't you introduce yourself real quick, and then I want to ask you a question as to exactly what you believed as an old Earth creationist, because young Earth creationism has a narrower range of belief. I feel like, and I think that um, there's a lot of a lot more variety within the umbrella of old Earth creationism. Yeah, I, I, I am, to my YouTubers, I am the day 1998, for my friends, I am Lamont Stewart. Uh, I have a YouTube channel and a Twitch channel and every other channel out there in, in the, because I have one of, one of everything else. <laughs> All right. And um, so when you say you were an old Earth creationist, you, did you believe that the universe was, you know, 14... Point whatever billion years old and the earth was four and a half billion years old and all that yeah i don't really know how whole i thought the earth what all that stuff was because because i was just you know when i was at church you know they talked about the gap theory thing mm -hmm. you know where the you know one something the first verse is one thing then stuff happened and then Apparently, Satan Satan was the meteor that killed the dinosaurs, and then the reboot. Wait, here. Satan was the meteor that killed the dinosaurs. Yeah, I think that's. I, think that's, I remember him, the pastor, oh. saying that one time. Okay, that's that's a new one on me. I've I've never heard anyone say that. Um, I don't think we got ban we got bans from heaven. Okay, all right, that's interesting. I'll give it that. But you were an anti-evolutionist, I assume. I don't say anti-evolutionist. I said no. I didn't know what it was. Okay. I, mean, I can't. I like, can't really be anti. You have no idea what you're. What it is. Okay. Now, were you uh, raised as an old Earth creationist? Well, I don't say. I, I don't say I was raised as it because they just. I believe the Earth was old because I read in, in the library read books about old, prehistoric animals, you know, and where you know I saw these history books about like the old trilobites and the uh, cephalopods and the uh, scorpions timeline things, and I just believe God created stuff. So I guess that's really it. okay. And by the way, we have a $10 super chat from Ilya Moon. Thank you very much for your generous super chat. She says, support. And I, I really do appreciate the support. It does help. Um, yeah, it really helps a lot. So please, uh, as a reminder, when we do open up Q&A, super chat questions, why is Origin open up? Don't be a jerk, Origin. Sorry, for some reason, one of my video game launchers decided to just pop its face in front of my computer. I don't know why. Anyway, so um, <clears throat> is there like an age at which you can say that you became an old Earth creationist, or is it sort of sort of one of the like as far back as you can remember? You just had these kind of gap theory. Oh, I like of... remember. Okay. Since kindergarten, I guess. Okay. That's, that's why. That's, that's why I remember going to church. I might have been earlier, but you know, pre I don't remember my preschool days that much. Okay. So. Uh, and this was something that was in, taught to you in church. Was it part of home life too, or was it primarily a church thing? Primarily at church. Home life was just going to Sunday school on church on Sundays, and that's pretty much it. Okay. And so, about how old were you when you started to um, leave this sort of old Earth gap theory idea? Well, probably. Hmm. I guess call probably either late high school or early college when I actually learned science and stuff and learned what evolution was. Okay. Oh, and a two euro super chat from Jens van Brokhoven 
at Ilya Moon agreed. Thank you very much for your generous super chat, Jens. And also, Jens is one of my patrons on Patreon. So if you want to support the channel that way, uh, links are in the description. There are numerous tiers. You can get early access to most of my videos. Obviously not the streams, because that's not how streams work. Um, you can get early in... Access, early access to streams, but you can be on a stream an hour <laughs> early. Yes. <laughs> you can try... If you're one of my patrons, you get to time travel. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> that's one of the top tier benefits. But uh, more seriously, though, there is a, a great uh, Discord server. That's just for the patrons. I post uh, stuff I'm working on. You get previews of stuff that I haven't even finished yet. Um, you can get your name in the credits. And uh, yeah, it's uh, we have fun. And uh, if you're considering that, check down all the links. But anyway, uh, back to the topic on hand. Uh, just had to stop to show myself every once in a while. Um, okay, so <clears throat> you were learning this about evolution and things. This was uh, like in high school, or was this something you were doing on your own? I guess both. Just read. I love to read books. Okay, that's fair. And so, over the course of uh, high school, you realized that hey, this whole evolution thing is is true. Yeah. So, <clears throat> what about the old Earth creationist beliefs were the most incompatible with what you were learning in all of these books on things like evolution and things? Because um, I assume that there must have been some kind of conflict. Mm -hmm. So what was the thing, what were the things that was the most in conflict? I assume you perhaps stopped thinking that the meteor that killed the dinosaurs was Satan. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> uh, uh, this... The sudden the sudden like appear appearance of things, you know, like angry it's not good explain explain, I guess. I guess, you know, I th thought before you before create things that suddenly appear, I learned that things can, you know, change change a bit. Okay. So when you were a older creationist were you had you been taught that like Perhaps certain biological forms simply appeared and disappeared from the bio or from the fossil record without really having any antecedents that could have been evolutionary ancestors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I find that that's a really common thing, and it's strange because um, it's just so at odds. Like I remember when I was a young Earth creationist, it was basically like a mantra that there are no transitional fossils, and it's like, well, yeah, there are. There's hundreds of them all over the place. Um, it's off topic real fast. Speaking of that, I don't really know. I I honestly didn't know uh, yeah, YC was really a thing until like a like like the last ten, fifteen years. Really? I, I, like 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 the, people think that Earth is because like I said, I was a hist like a history mate. I loved history. I'm like people thought the Earth was thousand years old, but what about the the Native Americans ten thousand years ago across their land bridge? It's not. Yeah, it's it's one of the big problems is that. Um... 6,000 years ago may, depending on exactly how you date certain archaeological things, may actually be after the invention of the most basic forms of writing. And so technically that's younger than history is. You know, you, you might as well say the universe is 100 years old. Like, well, what about all the stuff that we know was going on before that? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's... Young Earth creationism is a strange thing. And... Um, I generally have a lot more, I don't know if I want to say, I have. I usually have less to argue with when it comes to old earth creationism. It usually just comes down to evolution. And um, I think they reject a lot less of the science. But then I also know people uh, who call themselves old earth creationists who don't reject evolution. So, I don't know. Um, so how did you feel about you know, the people who had been teaching you this old Earth creationist stuff after you realized that, hey, this is, uh, this is just not actually very accurate. This is wrong. I, I just actually really think much of it. I'm like, like I was like, like whatever. Okay. I, really, I, was, I, I was really, a, a, back, at least back then, I was really a fighter, a speaker-upper, and I'm just like, just, just, I'm just gonna sit there and like, try, I disagree. Okay. Did you let uh, like friends and family know about your change of position on that? Yeah, 
I've, I, I've told people that, that I so I can't say believe that's a kitten thing, but you know, it's like that I accept evolution, you know, like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a thing I do, I do now. Okay. And, um, did that cause any, any problems there? Because some people, you know, it's, it's sort of a, a coming out thing where there's, I've known people for whom their creationism was a big part of their identity and was a big part of their, the identity of their peer groups. And there was some friction when they decided to reveal that they were no longer uh, creationists. Was that the case? Well, also, well, my family didn't really care because most of my family aren't really churchgoers that much anymore. Uh, even I, my sister, I think, is still a creationist, but she's not one of those uh, you have to believe in this or you'll die. Okay. Uh, she didn't consider some kind of big salvation issue? Yeah, she thinks, you know, yeah. Okay. And I just want to thank Ilya Moon once again, because Ilya Moon just became my newest patron. So, thank you very much, Ilya Moon. I will be making sure to add uh, you and my other new patron that I got this month, or, so sorry, someone upped their pledge level. Um... I'll be making sure that you two get into the credits for next month because I only update credits on the month because I wait until after the first billing cycle just because eh, I feel like that's, I don't know, that's just my policy. So there you go. Um, so now you can do all the stuff the patrons can do. You can vote. You can watch stuff early. Um, I'll make sure that you're on the Discord server. If you're not, let me know. But thank you very much, Ilya. Uh, I just want to express my appreciation. So, um, what did you think about the Flood when you were a Old Earth creationist? Did you think the, the, there was a global Noah's Flood? Actually, yes. But, again, it got confused me a, a, a little bit because, you know, I believe, you know, in history and Native Americans, but then when the Flood, they said the Flood happened four thousand years ago, I'm like, I was like, like wait, 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 wait. How could the flood happen four thousand years ago? They Americans were over here two thousand years ago. So I had to do a little um, what's it what's it called mental gymnastics. Yeah, and this is before I knew the flood was probably prob was was you know not real at all. I was like, this doesn't make sense. The flood had to happen before Native Americans came over came over to America. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like forty thousand years ago, maybe or fifty twenty thousand years ago. So I, I like so I try I try to make history fit my preconceptions or you know in my head. Right. There were there were too many contradictory things that you already knew were true about history for the flood to easily fit in. Yeah, possibly 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 I mean that early or that close to our time period. Oh, and Joseph Grant said, uh, I would become a patron, but I'm disabled at Vietnam, but on very limited income. And here's, here's my rule for everyone. Do not give me your money if you cannot afford it. I don't want it. If you can't afford to do anything like Super Chat or be a patron or whatever, then please don't. I don't want to be the cause of anyone having trouble making ends meet. Support for creators like this is for when you have... When you have money to be generous with. When you're in a situation where you don't, then please don't give me or anyone else that's a, a creator money like that. It's your your views, likes, shares, comments, those help a lot. And I mean it. It's you I notice it. When I get more engagement and views, YouTube picks up the video and starts running with it. So but but you mean you're not like, what? You mean you're not like every five minutes sh shelling your like video series and? Oh hey, I mean, do watch all my video series. Definitely do that. But... I meant like 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 Kent does in his videos. Like oh yeah, oh. Just give us for this the, the whole video series for nine ninety five. Yeah, give me fifty bucks and I'll send you a hard copy of any one of my videos. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I would, but please don't do that. That's stupid. Uh -huh. I'll try. I'll get you a VHS. How about that? That'll be interesting. Anybody here? Anybody even know what VHS here? So know what VHS is? Well, we know Joseph Grant does because he's a Vietnam vet, so he was definitely around for the VHS craze. 
Um, so, uh, right now, do you, I assume that you don't think that there was a, a global flood? No. Okay. And animals and plants and other organisms are all related to each other? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to know, still don't know what the exact lines are, but I think I'm not a biologist or a botanist or anything like that. So. Well, yeah. I mean... Heck, I, I do. I spend a lot of time looking into this, and I still don't know where all of the lines are. In fact, the scientists don't know where all the lines are because, in some cases, it's hard to tell. Yeah, this was something that I wish DNA could be shown at you know older than than whatever how old it is now. Like, you can exactly check like the real lines of stuff. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate because you know you get things like um, you get fairly complicated relationships. Like uh, just recently. Uh, a new study on Tyrannosauroidea was published with new phylogenetic analysis, and it's upset some apple carts and very complete data set though. So you know, there's always these questions. And uh, is, that, is that like the one where they 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 might have rearranged the dinosaurs as? Uh, no, that was an older one. That was a survey of a lot of dinosaurs. And right now, there's been some pushback and some questions about the exact amount of reproducibility that the study had. So that one is still a little up in the air. But um, what do you think is the craziest thing that you believe as an old Earth creationist that you no longer believe? The craziest thing, craziest thing. Uh, well, besides, I guess besides, you know, Satan being the, the, reboot, the di dinosaur reboot thing. I mean, yeah, that's a pretty big one for me. That's... I really hadn't heard that one. Um, I... I don't think I'll know, honestly. Okay. Well, were there any other things that you had a lot of trouble struggling to reconcile? Because you said that pretty early on you had trouble with the flood because the supposed date of the flood didn't match with what you knew from history and archaeology. Yeah, well... I guess, you know, that, you know, like I thought, you know, God, God wouldn't lie about this, but like, why was he saying this stuff in the Bible that that was a lie? Okay. <laughs> that happened, I guess. So was that a problem for your overall uh, belief in God? Was realizing yeah. that these things probably weren't historical? No, not first. No, I just became a the a theistic evolutionist. Okay. And see, that's one of the things where I I know of people who are theistic evolutionists, but who call themselves old Earth creationists because they're like, well, I think the universe was created. Like, okay, I I guess I see that. Um. <clears throat> all right. Was this a big topic at your church? Was it something that was? often discussed or was it sort of a more of a background sort of thing background thing a thing really a background thing i guess it wasn't really i i remember a, a, a passing i remember that thing that in a, in a passing sermon one time when back in the 80s and really didn't get in the crisis and that much talking about until around the time that the, the museum popped up into existence no, which museum is that? The Creation Museum. Oh, the Creation Museum. Okay. An hour, which is which is literally an hour away, an hour away from where I live. Okay. So, was there because the Creation Museum doesn't have the same ideas about creation that your church did? So, was there any discussion between the members of the church about this museum that was an old Earth museum and was talking about the Earth only being six thousand years old, whereas you guys believed in a gap theory? Was there any? No, they they just went to visit them. Okay, and they that didn't seem to bother them. If there was that difference, not really. I guess hmm. I guess the time changed. Like time changes, I guess, and the, and that's when I learned it. And that's when I learned around that time. That's when I learned about the the YEC thing. Now, at that point, you were not an old Earth creationist anymore. No, I was. Uh, I was definitely. I definitely was a. Uh, uh, evolutionist. Okay. <laughs> I should say that. That's what we're saying that now, but uh, but 
the time I thought I was all I thought it was we were name things were weird. I thought I was an intelligent designer because I thought that meant theistic evolutionist. You know, oh, okay. I I didn't know it meant crazy at the time until till years later. I thought, oh, God guided evolution through his design. I guess. Okay. <laughs> Um, sorry, I left it. So, someone decided to te to type in some uh some Spanish in the chat. Anyway, um, okay. So, did you go to the museum? Yeah, twice. Wow. Okay. So, two thousand seven and two thousand eight. Okay. So, how would you describe your experiences there as someone who was fairly recently, I guess, no longer a creationist, right? Yeah. And so what was it like to be there and see all this stuff that you might have believed a few years earlier, but now you just know is not accurate? It was uh, weird. The, the first thing went to the planetarium part. They tried to explain how the light worked, you know, and uh, really, they didn't, really they didn't do much science. They, they said, oh, basically all they did was, like, oh, the Earth is this big, and the Sun is this big, and, the, and these stars are this big, and this big, and this big. They didn't really teach you anything, like, except for stuff you already knew, you know? Yeah. The Sun's pretty small, you know, compared to the whole universe. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> That's true. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ken Ham. Um... And, and then they went to... Uh, Little another little thing for, for the actual museum tour. They, they had little angels, you know, pretending to be students, you know. And the, then they brought, you know, they 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 brought up the at the time, I guess, I guess, was the newly found out soft dinosaur tissue thing. Oh my goodness! Two thousand seven, like, and the pretending to be students, like, but but so, like, teacher, sir, this, we found soft. We found we we found soft tissues. Yeah, actually, that reminds me. Um. I know Eric Viertaler is in the chat, and uh, Eric, if you could pass along like an email or something I could use to get in touch with um, with Mary Schweitzer, who was the person who first discovered that soft tissue, I would love to have her on for one of these, because I don't know if you know this, but she is a former Young Earth creationist. So <clears throat> I think that would be a good episode, because now she's a professional paleontologist and definitely not a Young Earth creationist. <laughs> um. Uh. So, actually, I was only vaguely aware that there even was a planetarium at the, the Creation Museum. Uh, do you think that you might go back to see... Yeah, I, I've wanted to go back now that... I've, I've wanted to go back now that, no, no, that since I'm no longer like a... a three-day-a-week churchgoer, you know? Like, I want to I wanna see back at, at, with like, new eyes. Mm -hmm. So I, so I still semi believe stuff back then, not what they're teaching, you know. But okay, but... yeah, I'm actually interested to go. Um, it's <laughs> it's not an easy thing for me to get out there. It's it's like three days away from me. So <laughs> yeah. Um, but it would be interesting for me because I was I was pretty into this whole young Earth creationism thing when I was a kid, and. Uh, yeah, I think it would be. But yeah, I think the museum's different now from when I went there like thirteen years thirteen years ago. Now it is. From what I can tell, it's less interesting now. Yeah, when I went there, basically, uh, they had different room, like different things, and they, they it was the, all about the seven C's. See, I can remember, remember off the top of my head. First was creation. That makes sense. Big one. Then. Uh, I think next was corruption. Okay. Uh, then catastrophe. Okay. Big flood. Yep, the flood. Was now his own, now his own museum. <laughs> then confusion, the Babel stuff. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Then this gets all the way to Christ. <laughs> oh, just ignore the whole rest of history between then and and Jesus. Yeah, okay. It, 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 Anything between between the Tower of Babel, you know, the, and then there's only a matter 
They, they really are answers in Genesis. It's like, oh, hey, you ever hear of right, Exodus, right, Leviticus, it's, Kings? Right, it's, it's only up to chapter 11 in Genesis. Right. And Abraham <laughs> appeared and like, they're like, <laughs> let's see. Then Christ, that's five. The old, six was uh, crucifixion. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure. These scenes do not seem to have the same sort of duration and I feel like crucifixion fits into the Christ section. But hey, I'm not answers in Genesis. They can do whatever they want with their C's. I think then the seventh C was, was was something else. I forget. But it was about, I guess it was about uh, maybe a celebration. I, I forget the last C was about. Maybe about, church? Maybe, maybe. the era of the church or something? Okay. Yeah. 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 I feel oh, like seven yeah. C's is too many. Like, you want to keep a mnemonic with a single letter? Keep it under like four. But the, yeah, then the, like the first room was about uh, they they, they the, the the two theory things like 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 I believe we're, we're both paleontologists, but you know he believes you know in this I believe I take my authority from the Bible, so that's how I'm looking for my my fossils to the Bible. Oh yeah, I've I've seen that display, I, not in person, but I've I've seen what it looks like. I think it's been changed, but yeah, it's it's really weird because that's really not how science works at all, but. Um, so how do you feel about the fact that there are lots of people that are basically being taught as, especially as kids, because I find it's not too common, and it happens, but it's not too common that an adult becomes a creationist after having not been one. Oh, I think if, 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 if an adult does it, you know, they might be, I don't think that they're, is there, if they have to believe that stuff, you know, I guess it's the right to, I guess, is there... They what, but you know, but kids are like more, like like I was. They're more like, I say flexible. They're more, they 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 take stuff for granted, I guess, or they look the word they, they believe uh what their authorities tell them because they're the authorities. You know, they wouldn't lie to them. Right. Well, that's one of the things. Kids are always going to be trusting of their parents and the people that their parents uh trust. And it, it does annoy me when people teach their kids such obviously wrong things. Although I did have an entire debate with uh, Fight the Flat Earth about whether or not teaching your kids crazy pseudoscience should be considered child abuse in and of itself. And I took the position that no, it shouldn't. So we'll say that. I don't think it is rises to the level in itself of child abuse, but well, I it, guess, is an, it does annoy me. I guess Flat Earther is one thing, but you know, if you... Like if you're like, let's, let's, uh, parents that that don't that deny your kids medical stuff, like taking the doctor and stuff, and and just believe that you can pray your sickness away. Right. That really yeah, them. that I would say is child abuse. Um, <clears throat> I would also count things like um, like Jehovah's Witness parents who refuse uh, medically necessary blood transfusions for the kids. I think those kids should be removed from their care at least for the period of time in which they need this emergency medical care. And I think if it's found that you didn't bring them to the hospital because you didn't want them to get this necessary medical care, you should be in jail for manslaughter. I, and it's like, oh, but religious freedom. It's like religious freedom stops when you're killing your kids. It stops before that in most cases. But yeah, if you're killing your kids for your religious freedom, I don't care about your religious freedom. Stop. Stop it. Don't kill kids. Uh, so yeah, that's all a lot more serious than teaching kids that a, a comet or an asteroid was Satan. Which is still really weird. Was there a reason that they said that that was Satan? Like, what was the reasoning there? I really couldn't tell you because I was only like in elementary school at the time. Uh, yeah, I guess you know they thought that was you know between verses one and two. That was the earth. That, that was like the reboot or the retcon or whatever you call it. Like that. They're like, okay, it's time to like reset everything. And like. Okay, so let me see. Eight of the mammals. Let me see if I have this this story correct, right? So, throughout the Paleozoic and the Mesozoic, God is sequentially creating these various organisms, but they're not evolving. He's just poofing them into existence as organisms, and he's he's changing out which animals are around at what point for some reason. I guess just for I don't know for fun, and then Satan falls around the sixty-six-ish million years ago. And when he falls, he literally falls to Earth, 
killing the dinosaurs. Then God starts making mammals. And eventually one of the mammals he makes, or he starts making more mammals, I guess. He starts letting mammals become the dominant life form by creating bigger ones and faster ones it, and whatever. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's when the six, the, the six day thing happens, I guess. That's when... So, like... so it was not only a gap, but it was also sort of a day age, except the whole, all the ages were just stuck inside the, you know, the, the last few, or well, the last 66 million years. Probably. I, 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 I can't really tell you. I was like a single digits back then, like so. Right. This is a vague remembrance of this. That's a. I don't know that I've ever heard of a church teaching that exact combination because usually, in my experience, old Earth creationists who are day agers and old Earth creationists who are gap theory, um, like those two things tend not to be super well combined, like. <clears throat> Usually when it comes to gap theories, what I have seen is there's this idea that sort of like the beginning of humanity is around where the gaps was. And then like before that, there was, you know, there was this, everything up to then is part of this gap between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. And then there's some calamity. And then the days are more or less literal days in which God fixes whatever the calamity is. And then... There you go. And then I've heard day-agers who think that each day lasts some enormous amount of time. Like, they'll say that, like, the first day might have been the first, like, 10 billion years of the universe's existence. And then each day is probably going to be getting progressively shorter. But it's going to be referring to some other smaller period in the history of Earth or the universe. So, that's an interesting kind of combination there. Um, if you don't mind, what was there a denomination or something that you, that the church belonged uh -huh. to? Southern Baptist. Okay. So I know some Southern Baptists that are young Earth creationists, and I guess now there are some that are old. It seems like it's a fairly diverse theological group. Like, they don't seem to all agree on everything. So it's interesting, because I, I know um, there's actually a fairly famous Southern Baptist church not far from where I am, where the uh, lead pastor is... He's a little quiet about it, but he's a young Earth creationist, and every once in a while, it, it comes up, and he, he gets ridiculed for it online sometimes, because <laughs> it's a little ridiculous. And he's otherwise a fairly smart individual, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little strange. Okay, so, <clears throat> now are you someone who does a lot of reading onto things like geology, paleontology, astronomy, and stuff? Mm. More, 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 more of biology. Okay. Other, other stuff. I, I, I do like, cause I, cause like I said, I was, I was not, and I didn't biology that much. Like I, I've always been more into history than science technically, but okay. it's more the when it happened than you know, the the why and how and the, uh, but I, I do, I do, I do. When I was younger, my interest in science was basically some animals and and the food in the food chains. Okay, I love, I love food chains. All right. So, <clears throat> is there anything in history in particular besides, say, the uh, the Native Americans that you find is a problem for old Earth creationism or creationism in general? I guess it's learning about you know the continental plate things. How there's like there's like two or three mega continents instead of just the one. I used to oh yeah, there there were quite. A, I mean, there are always you know various hypotheses, but uh, last count, I think I've heard that geologists have fairly reasonably well uh, recovered about fifteen over the course of the last uh, four billion years supercontinents. So that's Quite a few. Um, yeah, that's I can see that. I also think that um, one of the things that you don't hear about a lot with creationists, but they definitely believe, is things like the historicity of the Tower of Babel and um, the Exodus. And, I mean, there's no reason to think there was a Tower of Babel. I mean, human migration patterns do not emanate from the Crescent Valley. 
into other directions. Um, you know, they emanate from North Africa. Actually, they emanate from Central Africa into North Africa and Southern Africa and Western Africa, and then into the Middle East. So there's there's those problems, and also um, like there just isn't really much evidence for the Exodus having happened the way it's described in the book of Exodus, and these are still things that most creations say happen literally, and I assume that your church was one of, was also agreeing there. Yeah, actually, I, back when I was still, still that, I actually read a book about that, that tried to, uh, that, like, uh, I, at the time that, you know, that tried to, again, to make history fit the Bible, you know, or Bible fit the history thing, where, is this book by this guy named I? I don't think he's a creationist or what he is, but but he 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 wrote a book called Pharaohs and Kings. He talked about that time that time the thing where he claimed to find where he claimed to find like evidence that proved the Bible happened in, in Egypt in, in that time period. I think his name was David Roll. You ever heard of him before or not? I'm not familiar with him. No. Yeah, because I because I literally. What's the uh, I think on the history on the history channel, maybe it was history channel or TLC back you know back when history channel was was history. Well, yeah, instead of just like aliens. L- little joke there. I I, I, I have sometimes, but yeah, it's a, it a three part series, and they I read a book about it where basically he's he said he claimed he found um, archaeological evidence, you know, about how the time period was wrong and stuff. So he like he like like. The Bible really happen. Bible stuff really happened. Or of course, now he's like really. Uh, I think people like, even back then, people didn't didn't like disprove it. You know, I don't, I don't know what happened to him now, but yeah. But back then, I was like, I was like all into that book. Yeah. Well, I I've yet to see anyone really convincingly argue for the, uh, the accuracy of Exodus as a literal work of history. Um, obviously, there are certain aspects of the historical books in the Bible that have turned out to be uh, in line with some archaeological evidence. Like most of the major locations and people who have been mentioned after Exodus, there are some, there are actually archaeological sites and uh, artifacts associated with these names. Yeah, for a long time, you know, I, I, anything, anything after the flood, being before the flood, I'm like, ah, it probably didn't happen, but for a long time, anything after the flood, like Abraham and stuff like that, I'm like, oh, that probably happened. I, I, was, I was like, oh, that probably definitely happened because I was still, I was still like a solid believer in the Bible for the most part, still. But I was like, before that, I was like, man, the flood, you know, Adam and Eve, you know, probably not that close, really realistic. But I was like, yeah, the other stuff probably happened. Okay. All right. So, um, do you still engage with any of your? Or with creationism at all? Just from what this from what I, I watched on YouTube. Okay, that's fair. All right. Well, I think. Yeah. yeah sorry, I think like it's weird. I I feel like sometimes I feel like I look back at what I at them. I, I'm thinking, I think, wow, was I was I was I like that? I don't think I was, but you never know how you were when you're think differently now okay um one second so i think it's a little bit earlier than we normally open up for questions but i think i want to hear what the if which uh questions the audience has and whatnot so if you have questions um for me or for vandalia 1998 or lamont or what, what would you prefer to be called i actually should have asked you that at the very beginning eh, call me whatever okay if you have questions for whatever <laughs> Please leave them in the chat, and I'm sure that whatever will answer them. So there you go. That's 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 now your new nickname. It's awesome. <laughs> I've been I've I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> um. So <clears throat> one quick little channel announcement is uh, the premiere that I have set for Thursday might end up getting bumped to to uh, Saturday. I might have another Leaving Young Earth Creationism this Thursday. I'm going to see if he can do it the next Thursday, just because I've already set that premiere. And I don't want to... Um... That, that, that premiere has already been rescheduled once. I would rather not reschedule it twice. So I might try to see if I can have him do it next Thursday. But that's uh, 
there is another leading young earth creationism in the works and if you are watching this now or at any time in the future and you would like to tell your story about leading young earth creationism or old earth uh i focus more on young earth but you know uh please just email me at the.dapper.dino.yt at gmail.com uh, that's also the email that you'll find on my about page on this youtube channel so we have some questions uh let's see um question for lamont do you still believe in god and my oh. policy on those is you do not have to answer those questions if you want, don't want to but you may honestly i do not know <laughs> okay Um, and this, that was from Eric Viertaler, uh, who has been on your channel. Yes. He's been on there twice. W one time with you. Okay. Uh, yes, that's true. We did the, uh, the after show for his debate with Cody, uh, on your channel, didn't we? That was a, that was a fun after show. Yes. In fact, Cody basically had to say, okay, shut up, Dapper. I think because I was too easily refuting his points, but that's just my yeah, take yeah, on I think it. That's when I brought, I brought up to him about the the flood and the no and the and the Native Americans. Yeah. All right. So we have another question from Eric Vertaler. Um, another question for Lamont: Has he ever thought of doing a debate on creation versus evolution? No, because I don't believe I have enough knowledge to really uh, not say seriously. The I guess. I don't, I, don't, I don't think I have the knowledge to fully debate somebody about a subject. Okay. What I, about... I, don't, I oh, wouldn't want to like to go in like unprepared or like, you know... Right. What about something like um, historicity of the flood or something like that? I, had, I just had to have the research and stuff. I would have to research and stuff. Okay. Yeah. That's, hey, that's very fair. Um, let's see. Uh, from Joseph Grant, what was the main idea that caused you to rethink your ideas? Just le le learning stuff. Okay. The knowledge of, you no, know, not not being like, like, like not just like saying, uh, read the Bible. Okay, that's all I need to know. La 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 la. la. I don't need to know anything else. Just you know, learning, new, keep on learning new things. I, I, it's like, I, like I said, I like reading. I like, I like learning stuff. Okay, hold on one second. Maya Atkinson just accused me of teasing her. Maya, when do I ever tease you? Come on. Let's be honest here. When do I tease you? Well, maybe I do a little bit. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, I just lost track of where I was in chat. So give me a second while I try to catch up. Uh, also, the evil Scotsman says, I believe in response to your, the question about uh, God... Uh, he says, an, an honest answer, fair enough. So I, and I agree. Um, I'm definitely a fan of people admitting when they are not sure about things, because that's the honest thing to do. Uh, there are things I don't know about. There are things that I think I know about and I'm wrong. And um, the way that you can grow in your knowledge about anything is to first admit when you don't know what is going on about certain things. Some things you do know, but... Admit when you don't, because then you can move on and actually get uh, new information. So, and don't be afraid to be wrong. You're going to be wrong. Everyone's wrong. It's okay. So they, so they say you learn, learn people. You learn from mistakes. Exactly. You learn from mistakes, <clears throat> and one. But one of the big mistakes that's hard to learn from is not being able to admit that you made a mistake. Uh, okay. So we have from Eric Rotaller. This is more of a comment, but I wanted to read it. Uh, Cody still thinks you were being rude to him when you were just calling him out and he refuses to do another video with you because he knows you can easily debunk him. Uh, that... Uh, is, oh, it's Maya says it's funny because Dapper is irony impaired. I actually am, it's true. I'm, I'm far too inclined to take things at face value, so... Yeah, yeah I, I, I thought of the highlights of that, that video we did with Cody... I made a, a joke, kind of, kind of like where he's talking about how animals can, but kind, you know. And I made a joke, well, like, like about sex, you know, things have sex. I, I made a joke about, well, what about great Danes and Chihuahuas? They can have sex. That I mean, they're different kinds, <laughs> or something like that. I'm like, it's like, 
I remember that joke I made. Yeah. Actually, um, I, I would be interested to do a response video to him. I mean, he obviously won't come on with me, but he can't stop me from uh, taking one of his videos and picking it apart. So I might, I might have to do that sometime if he starts doing a lot more uh, videos. I don't like yeah. to do it with debates too often because I feel yeah. like debates should be... They but, should be watched in their original context. And, yeah. 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 But actually, you know, that, that might be happen sometime because, you know, if... I guess in a few million, I guess in a while, maybe a thousand, I don't know how long it takes for dogs, you know, but if, you know, if chihuahuas and Great Danes don't have sex for a long time, you know, and they drift apart, they could be different species. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, actually, I would argue that uh, if not for the in intermediate forms in dogs right now that can all breed, you know, up and down, um, like if you were to wipe out all the dogs besides Great Danes and chihuahuas, they would be different species. And they wouldn't, and uh, the Chihuahuas are probably not, wouldn't be the same species as the Great Wolf. But yeah, the yeah, Great Danes I, might be. Yeah, I was always, always wondering, can't, since, they're, since they're technically the same species, how come, how come there's no uh, subspecies name for wolves? Wolf? The, the, there, is... there are. Uh, there are okay. numerous uh, subspecies for the, for the Great Wolf. Um, okay, I didn't know, yeah. I didn't know that. I, I thought there was just Great Wolves, like the, whatever that... Canis familiar, and then the, then the subspecies were the, were the dogs. I... Yeah, so Canis lupus is the gray wolf. Uh, Canis lupus familiaris is the subspecies for the domesticated dog. Uh, but there are, I mean, I'll, I'll just double check because I don't want to say the wrong thing. But let me double check. There we go. Oh, yeah. Literally, I, I live with myself now. I can't really clean the. Uh, uh, talking to. The Lucas asking Lucas questions, yeah. Uh, my it's my I, I got this house from my I, I got this house from my uh, family. I guess inherited, I guess. I really didn't uh, clean up very much. <laughs> Just kept things as it is. So, including the domesticated dog, there are nine subspecies of gray wolf. There's Canis lupus albus, Canis lupus oh. arabs, Canis lupus campestris. Canis lupus chanco, Canis lupus dingo, which is more closely related to Canis lupus familiaris, but either way. Okay. Um, then familiaris, uh, Bocineri, Canis lupus lupus, and Canis lupus palipes. So. See, yeah, see, see, I learned something new, I learned something new today. I, I thought there was only two, the gray wolf and the dogs. Nope, there are nine, including dogs, or if you don't want to so that you can still go back and forth as to whether or not dingoes are dogs or their own separate species. They're a land race of more or less dog, but they've been feral for so long that they're essentially wild animals. So it's, eh, dingoes are weird. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Eric Frisler says I should do a video on uh, Cody's video about the ferment. Um, send me a link to that. Uh, send me a message on like Facebook or something, uh, Eric. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, and you answered the question from Luca, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. From Tyler West, what was your biggest influence when you were a creationist? Someone like Hovind or Ham? Was there, was there like, an author? Just the pastor in the Bible, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't even know Ken, Ken Hovind was a thing until I saw, I saw a Logic's video. And Ken Ham was a thing until I went to the museum. <laughs> So tell them, I know I didn't know about Ken Ken Ham until two thousand seven. I didn't know about Ken Hove until like two thousand twelve. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Maya Maya says I was today years old when I learned about old Earth creationists. There you go. Um, Joseph Grant said uh, my specialty is linguistics, but also worked many years in psychology. And this man is a genuine article. Kudos to him. Uh. From Eric Grittaller, what does Lamont think of dinosaur deniers and flat earthers? Well, I think I think dinosaur deniers are are, are weird. <laughs> yes. Of, yeah, because <laughs> actually watched a video about. I actually saw a video of you about the the dinosaur denier book. You know, Christians against dinosaurs. <laughs> oh yeah, my goodness! I'm yeah, still not I, sure if they're really sincere or not. Because, because you know, I, before I believed, you know, there, for either there's, I thought there's two, two dinosaur people, ones that that died on the 
then died in the flood, and one that, that survived the flood and died afterwards. And now another people can do it all. And flat, and flat Earthers, it's funny. I actually, I actually have more, more sympathy for creationists than I do flat Earthers because creationism evolution is more. Uh, it's a hundred year, two hundred year thing. It's more recent thing to get behind. Flat Earthers are like. 500 to 10, 000, a thousand years old at least to get behind they thought a lot longer to get with the program in my opinion yeah <laughs> the creation oh that, i mean they've had thousands of years and by the way uh by chesh uh chesh stopped into the chat but she has to go down she has to go and pull down my setup oh right she's going over she's a uh, house sitting uh for i think the week so she's transferring all of her electronics and whatnot over to the other house so good luck, Bye. Chesh. Bye, Chessy. I hope that I hope that no one breaks into the house. I always hope but yeah. that. But um, let's see. Uh, dinosaur deny. This is from Eric Rettler. Uh, a dinosaur denier recently did a documentary called "The Dinosaur Deception." Um, okay, you need to send that to me because that's something that needs to be. I need to at least watch it. I can't guarantee I'm going to respond to it because there are sometimes when I see things, I'm like, I feel like I've covered all these things. But I want to at least see it because it, watching it, things like that is a guilty pleasure. Did you ever, did you ever, you ever watch their video about the, the read through of the dinosaurs is dinosaurs or lies children's book? No, they have a children's book. Yes, that's a, they, they, oh my goodness. I can, I, can, I, can, I can find the link to their video, but it's they, they read the book online. They read the book, you know, like take uh, some pictures. This it's called My Friends Are Lies, like. My friends are lies. Is the title of this book? I'm pretty sure, yeah. All right, uh, that actually makes me think that this camp is into the more post territory situation because I have trouble thinking that they feel like that's a good title legitimately. But then again, it's really hard to tell. So, um, one of the things that was pointed out to a creationist I know of is that when creationists are trying to be silly and uh, sort of parody themselves, or when someone's trying to parody a creationist, it's very hard to tell if they're actually being uh, legitimately, like if they're legitimately advocating these things, because you're so far into pose law territory with creationism. The things that creationists believe, honestly believe, are so far from reality that it's almost impossible to parody it. But that kind of name makes me think that it might be a, a parody. Um, and uh, Eric sent me the link to the documentary. Thank you. I will almost certainly be watching that later. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. Uh, it's Apparently the documentary is horrendous. It's as bad as the original design for Sonic from for the Sonic movie. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was a bad design. Um, so yeah, remember, if you got, if you got questions, put them in here, because um, we definitely... Mom's not going to always be here. Yeah. So, yeah. um... Now, I do want to say, you have a, a YouTube channel that I have linked in the description, I believe, right? That is in the description? Let me look. Yes, yes it okay, is. Okay, so yeah, if you guys want to see more here, of Lamont's... I'll say the, here's the link to that video. I, I, I just found it. Okay. It's, 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 it's the Chris Dinosaurs uh, uh, web YouTube channel. This is Kristen story time. All my friends are lies. All my friends are awesome. Yeah, send that send that to me because that's uh that's gonna be interesting. Um, in the, in the, in the, I said I in the chat. You can, I can send to you later in in Discord too. Okay. Yeah. Stephanie Wilson just said a uh, writer of dinosaurs has found a real doozy. Uh, you will find this on his uh, LBRY. Dinosaurs never existed. The truth exposed. I will say, um, at least one of the more famous uh, Christians Against Dinosaurs spokespeople was, um, I don't remember her name, but she had this video on their channel where she took a bunch of plaster and smashed it and was like, oh, if I told you that you could have a million dollars if you turn this into a dinosaur skeleton, could you do it? At first, the answer is, well, not in any way that would convince anyone familiar with anatomy. But um, it turns out she actually was a Poe. She was actually an atheist who was part of this group in order to try and poke fun at creationists and sort of fundamentalist Christians. So that was kind of unfortunate that she ended up being a poet, because I don't like it when people poe at kind of stuff, because it's like, it's ridiculous enough on its own. We don't need to add to it. Um, but from Eric Grutaller, what does Lamont now think of Behemoth and Leviathan? What do you think those were when they're described in the Bible? Uh, 
I guess now I think they're. I I really they, they thought they were dinosaurs to be honest, because well now I have more evidence that they really weren't. You know, excuse me, especially when I learned about when they they said people think you know the the cedar uh, to like a cedar tree like. But then I learned that, you know, there's a difference between American cedars and, and Lebanese cedars. Right. And that if, since this is written somewhere near Lebanon, the Lebanese cedar is a much more likely identification? Yeah, it's like, just like, oh, like, like, like people say, the trees, are, cedar trees are this big. Like, yeah. And they really knew about cedar trees that they wouldn't see for a, a, for a thousands of years, thousands of years. Right. Yeah, that's, and uh, Eric Vertaller also says uh, it was Kristen Eau Claire. What about Leviathan? Because I'm, I'm more up in the air about the identity of, identity of Leviathan, and I'm more inclined to say maybe it's just a mythical creature, because yeah. the description for Behemoth is it's not fairly unusual. I mean, it doesn't breathe fire, or it doesn't fly, or do anything like that. But apparently, Leviathan yeah. breathes fire. So mm. yeah, yeah, I didn't really know. Think about it, I didn't really know know because you in Job, you know. Book of Job, you really don't know where it's taking place at. You know, it could be anywhere. They really say it's in Israel or anything like that. That that's more open. That's more of an open. That that book is more of an open. You know, place where it could take a place at. You know, and they really don't know, know about any elephants in that area. You see them over in Indi in India. See them maybe over in Africa. Maybe you don't really see elephants. At least, at least I at least I didn't know about. It. In, in the in the Middle East area that much? Um, I don't believe at the time that Job was most likely written. Although, um, I mean, royalties had menageries for thousands of years, so it's it's entirely possible that they were known about. So, for instance, um, like, in ancient Rome, gladiators would fight uh, leopards and ostriches and things, which were not anywhere around Italy. But, I think, the first, at, least, at least I could be wrong about this, it might be a myth or whatever, but the first time they, the Romans saw elephants was when Hannibal came over the Alps and stuff, and like, is that? It was the first time a lot of them had, yeah. Um, Not, that really, uh, elephants are, are really a European animal that that much, unless you go back no. into the Ice Age at the time, right? Uh, Joseph Grant uh, says that I have a thought that the end of the Ice Age and sea level raising. Uh, 300 feet may have contributed to the worldwide flood myths. Uh, your and and uh, Lamont's thoughts. So my thought is that I think that that's probably a little early for us to really identify that with um, any existing myths. And I think there are more recent uh, floods yeah. that were of yeah. just unprecedented scale as far as the actual history of you know that we have written down. Yeah. But what do you think? Uh, for a long time, I saw this documentary about that, you know, and I thought it was accurate. I thought it was almost accurate anymore, but about how I think I forget how long ago, ago it was about how like a like a media like some kind of meteoric comet hit the around the Black Sea area or maybe the Mediterranean because it caused some tsunamis and stuff back like a, I forget how long ago it was. I thought maybe that was the flood they're talking about. Okay. Yeah, I think a more recent flood is more likely, but I can't say that I can rule it out. I mean, there were huge yeah. areas of land that were flooded at the end of the Ice Age that humans had inhabited. And I could, I could think, I, I, th I do think that a flood might have happened, and maybe just you know what, like a game of telephone as you go out, go out, spread the game, the, the the legend gets bigger and bigger. It's yeah, like, it's possible. Like, like I was on the oh, I, got, I almost got killed by a flood. Oh. Here, 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 my friend Joe. He got killed by a flood, and he and, and hardly anybody survived. And he, oh, he brought some animals on his on his, on his boat too. Yeah, and go on, so on, so on, so on. Um, Illuminati Don. Oh, sorry. Uh, first, I'll go with uh, the evil Scotsman. Said Leviathan was a Nessie. I mean, sure, man. That's also a mythical creature because there is no Nessie. Sorry, I know that that's like a Scottish icon, but. Mm -mm. Actually, did you hear there was a, do you know about eDNA? What? eDNA, it stands for environmental DNA. I have not. So now um, scientists are good enough at getting sequences of DNA and replicating DNA fast enough to sequence it that they can actually take samples from the environment, from like, uh, like soil samples and water samples and things, oh. and see what kinds of DNA are in there. 
and then they can use it to identify what's living in the environment because there might be animals that are very hard to observe directly, but they're still going to shed DNA into the environment when they do things like shed skin or uh, release waste or things like that, or just decompose. And so uh, there was an eDNA st study done in the area around Loch Ness, and there was literally nothing unexpected found. Yeah, I, I guess I, they, I wonder how they did that. Like, like Loch Ness, what the, they believe, like he was in the flood and he got after the flood went down he got trapped there or something you know i've never actually asked a creationist what they think about or about like what that is even though some of them hold up uh like especially carl baugh and kent hovind they talk to they talk about all these cryptids as like oh there are probably dinosaurs still alive and take that evolution even though evolution doesn't say that there couldn't be dinosaurs still alive it just says that there isn't any or just science just says there isn't any evidence for non-avian dinosaurs being yeah, alive yeah it's like yeah the, the dinosaurs but i guess you know if you think about creationists creationists are right dinosaurs do live with humans i ate one for lunch yesterday that's true yeah um i i had a, a dinosaur egg for breakfast well that was part of my breakfast yeah. um so, so they so we gotta, admit, we gotta admit they were right and you know Something to joke about this too. There are dinosaurs on the on the ark because no released a dove to get the olive branch. That's, That's true. There were definitely yes. The story does explicitly state that there were dinosaurs on the ark. Um, there was something once. Uh, Illuminati Dawn says that uh, he talks to people on Discord that think dinosaurs never existed. You should um you should send them my email because I want to have that discussion. I don't know if I want it to be a formal debate because I don't think it's worth setting up like a, a legitimate like you know, timed debate. But I would be interested in having a perhaps lightly moderated discussion because I think that's interesting. Um, you know, apparently they think the dinosaurs were made up for the evolution line. I mean, yeah, sure, that makes sense. Um, oh, uh, Maya says, as silly as I think YECs are, at least they're consistent. I have coworkers who believe everything about evolution except the sapien line which uh, apparently is not a primate for some reason. Uh, was that ever a position that you encountered or held? That everything else evolved, but not humans. Humans didn't evolve. Yeah, I, I think, actually, I think, I, I think that, that might have been a thing I, I might have believed, you know, like, like, like we're, because we're, like, we're special. I mean, humans are definitely special, but not in ways that I feel like can't evolve. They're... They're extreme animals in certain aspects. Because, you know, I believe, that it, like, again, it was one of those things, you know, that I had to wrestle with sometimes, you know, because, like, because you learn, oh, humans are mammals. Yeah, humans are animals, but they're not, they're not like other animals. Like, 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 again, like with that debate we had with Cody, we said, talking about, the soul, like, you think about how humans are different than other animals, you know, like, because like I, I kind of believe that too, differently. Like, the soul, like, oh, humans have souls, so they're not animals, or they are animals, or just, I forget how he's said it. Yeah. What, so one thing that I find is a lot of creationists will say that hu humans are mammals, right? Because it's just yeah. so obvious that, I mean, like, look, you give live birth, you've got all of the mammal characteristics in your jaw and ear, I mean, milk, hair... And, like, you list off all of these things that, like, what does it take to be a mammal? And it's like, oh, yeah, humans are all of these things. But then as you get more specific, like, well, what kind of mammal are they? Are they a primate? And then they're starting, like, oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's like you have all the characteristics for a primate just like you have all the characteristics for a mammal. And I think that's because you're starting to get into the area where some creationists are actually starting to accept a certain amount of common ancestry in these groups. And they don't want humans to be in any group that has common ancestry with each other. As far as they're concerned, um, so from Tyler West, what about Leviathan being a big crocodile? I think it's plausible that it's an exaggerated crocodile. Uh, what do you think? I guess that makes the most most sense. I, I, again, I I never really gave it much thought. <laughs> right. Um, my personal, I I've been leaning recently towards identifying Leviathan with the sort of Middle Eastern uh, primordial dragon or serpent of chaos that uh, is slain by the gods to create the world out of the uh, primordial oceans. Because you can see certain hints of that kind of thinking in the Bible where um, 
Leviathan is a sea monster that God kills in the Psalms, and the world is originally formless and void, but then God separates the waters out in order to create the world. And so I think that that's sort of um, a vestige of those sorts of ideas about there being a primordial monster of chaos that, in this case, the one God destroys. Like, like that one that, that, that one tale uh, in the Babylon era. I forget, I, forget his, I forget his name. I want to say one thing, but, but I think I can get him confused with the Beowulf guy from England. Those are the different subjects, different stories. Hmm. I forget who he was. I think it was a Babylon thing, I guess, or maybe a, a Syrian tale. Yeah, well, the, a lot of those areas, like Babylon, Assyria, uh, the Sumerians, they had very similar mythologies. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was thinking, I think, is it named Beowulf? No, I think Beowulf was, was up, in, up in Europe. <laughs> uh, you're probably thinking of Gilgamesh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gilgamesh is the original Sumerian. Um, Eric Gertzler says, I wish Cody would do a debate with you. Look, I'm, I'm up for it. Um, I don't think that I'm particularly mean in debates. Um, so, you know what? Send him, Eric, send him my uh, debate me video where I lay out my general requirements for having a debate. And like I said, like I said in that video, it doesn't have to be on my channel. I might mirror it at some point, but it doesn't have to be on my channel initially. And as long as we get a moderator that he's okay with, yeah. Cool. Yeah, like, like, like I said, you want to do the after show on my channel, like you did last time. Like I, I, I volunteer for the after show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Illuminati Dawn says, um, "I could do that. I want to make a Discord uh, fan made server for you, Dapper Dino. I will start making it very soon. Yeah, definitely do it. Um, I'll join it. Um, my patron server is just for patrons, but um, and I so I probably won't do things like I probably won't post uh much in the way of previews or links to early access for videos because it's more of a patron thing, but um. You know, if I do some kind of funny thing, I'll post it in there. Um, I'll post art that I do in there, stuff like that. So yeah, feel free. Um, you ha you definitely have my endorsement to make a Dapper Dino uh, Discord server for fans. I, I, yeah, I have I have advertising. I have my own Discord server too that Dapper is a part of. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm on your Discord server, aren't I? Yep, you are. Yeah. So um. Uh, Eric Gertler says, maybe if you word it correctly, he will do a debate with you. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't like to do a debate where it's just like, oh, creation or evolution, because it's, it's too broad, and creationists like to conflate evolution with everything under the sun, so... But, uh, like, like, Kent 6 evolution. Well, like, one third of it is it one third or one sixth of it is even evolution to begin with? Uh, it's, it's a third of it. His last two are actually evolution. Yeah. Um... Uh, Trey the Explainer did a video on Leviathan. Yes, he did. It was very good. Uh, if one of my mods wants to grab that uh, video and post it in the chat, um, you guys should check it out. After this, of course, don't don't leave the stream to go watch Trey the Explainer. But do watch Trey the Explainer because he's really good. Um, let's see. Ken says there was more oxygen then, and dinosaurs had small nostrils, so friction caused them to breathe fire. Yeah, I've heard that one too. It's let's just say this. The thermodynamics are a bit iffy on that one. <laughs> it's funny though, because I, I don't, I don't how, how. I think I, I think I think there's learned that oxygen was uh, higher than nitro time, but I think it was what's what's much higher before the time of dinosaurs. I think wasn't it like during the during the amphibian reign? Yeah. So I don't have a great internal map of the like the oxygen content of Earth's atmosphere over time, but um. It definitely reached a peak sometime around the Carboniferous. The Carboniferous is when, you know, Earth's atmosphere was, it was like a tinderbox. That's one of the reasons we have a lot of charcoal deposits. But um, I do believe that there were periods during the Mesozoic when it went higher than it is now. Um, I wish Trey the Explainer would do a debate. I feel like that's not really his thing. I don't know. Like, maybe he would be great. I don't know. It just seems like that's not the thing that he really wants to do. He's more of an explainer. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, Amaya asked what uh, Mokelia Mbembe is, and that is a cryptid from the Congo that has been described in ways that kind of vaguely match a sauropod, like a Brachiosaurus or an Apatosaurus or something. And yeah. it's probably not a thing that exists. I think it'd be weird if they, they still, that if, if they did, a sauropod did exist, that they, unless they, unless they were like, 
have, got separate to what they call the island dwarfism, and they got shrinking down to the smaller, smaller to hide better, I guess. But it's weird. Well, I mean, we they still exist in in Europe. There were island dwarf sauropods. That is a thing that happened. We do know that sauropods did become uh, subject to island dwarfism at various times because during much of the uh, Jurassic, Europe was basically just a series of largish islands. And so there were numerous instances of island dwarfism and island gigantism, which both happen on islands. But, but yeah, that might happen that, but, but, I, but when the creationists say it, they're still the same size as they were back then, they're just very good at playing hide and seek. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's like Bigfoot, right? Bigfoot's just a blurry kind of a monster. That's why you can't get a good picture of him. He's just blurry. You know, actually, it's funny. Yeah, you know, I actually thought Bigfoot might exist for <laughs> my creation because you know it could be like a, one of those animals, that, like a orangutan or whatever, that crossed over the land bridge. Well, nothing about there being a North American ape. Like, okay, let's say we haven't explored North America, right? Yeah, it's it's just the continent that exists now where it exists. Nothing about the idea that there might be a non-human ape that has been there for a long time is particularly crazy. It just isn't true. Yeah. It's like if you said, oh, hey, look, I found a, a new species of, like, American, I don't know, anything else that lived in East Asia at the time. Like, oh, we found, like, a, a an American... Like, uh, like, like Sasquatch and a yeah. Yeti or, like, speciations of the same thing. <laughs> T.D. Lane, you are late, man. Come on. You're, like, an hour late. Um, oh, he's interdimensional. Yeah, I forgot. Bigfoot is yeah. interdimensional. It was widely unbelievable back like, before cameras and stuff, but I, I, heard, I, I doubt that everyone with a camera that went up there has not seen seen one uh, despite my now that existed, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then my ass, so it's sort of like an African Bigfoot or Chupacabra, and yeah, basically, it's... So there's this whole, like, pseudoscience field called cryptozoology, and it's all about these alleged animals that may might exist, like Bigfoot and Sasquatch and Chupacabra, uh, and, uh, or actually Chupacabras, but it tends to get, you know, regularized to Chupacabra for, uh, singular. Anyway, enough Spanish. Uh, or uh, Mukele Mbembe, or the Ropin. All of these are animals that are alleged to exist according to folklore, and there are cryptozoologists who go out doing silly things to try and find them. Like tromping through the woods in western Washington, making strange noises in hopes of attracting a Bigfoot. It's, uh, it's, it's strange and amusing, and I like the idea that there are people who are that enthusiastic about the possible existence of these monsters that just don't exist, that they go out of their way to try and prove it and fail every time. And the thing is, uh, places like the Discovery Channel or like the Animal Planet will put on these these uh, documentaries like, oh, the hunt for Bigfoot. And it's like, every time I watch one, I'm like, you know what? If they had found Bigfoot, I would have heard about it before this documentary aired. It consp- it's all conspiracy. Oh, it's all the conspiracy? Um, Xenos Carthage says, I found a Mongolian deathworm once. Well, I don't think he would be here to tell about it, because if anything that they say about the Mongolian deathworm is true, it's well named. But yeah, it also doesn't exist. Um, yeah, the Mongolian deathworm is one of the more fun ones. It's it's weird, because it doesn't really fall into any of the neat little categories. Like, cryptids tend to be birds or mammals, or things that are sort of like reptilian versions of birds or mammals, but the deathworm isn't really a snake. It's just, it's actually a worm. I don't know. Oh, Eric brought up Bill. Eric brought up Bill Nye, and funny story is, funny story is, I, I realized at the time, but I actually saw, knew about Bill Nye before his science show because he was on. He made a guest appearance on a Back to the Future cartoon. Interesting. I did not know about that. Okay. Yeah. It, it, was, it was like it was like, apparently it was a sequel to the third movie. It was a cartoon about. Um, Doc Brown and his two kids and Marty, you know, doing time machine travels, you know. At the end of that episode, Doc Brown says, and here's my assistant showing you science. And it was built, apparently it was a young Bill Nye doing science experiments for the Doc Brown show. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's weird. Apparently Bill Nye talked about cryptids uh, in his pseudoscience episode for Bill Nye the Science Guy. I don't remember that episode, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a long time ago. I think I was a teenager when the, I was still a teenager when that, when that show was airing. Yeah. And the evil Scotsman says, um, 
I love watching vids on cryptozoology, ghosts, and other weird stuff. It may be fake, but I still get goosebumps from them. And that's, I, I mean, I do too. Look, I like watching the odd episode of like ancient aliens or a ghost hunter show or watching horror movies about aliens and ghosts and whatever. It's all fun stuff. Just, you know, wait for real evidence before you give actual assent to any of these propositions. So yeah, it's it's great watching these things. They're fun. Um, yeah, it's. I don't think there's any harm in watching those things, and I don't want them to stop being made. And honestly, I don't really care that much that people go out and spend money on you know ghost boxes or whatever. You want to yeah. go pretend that there's ghosts in the hotel down the road, then go pretend there's ghosts in the hotel down the road. Have fun with it. Yeah, I guess you know. Thinking about Loch Ness monster, you know, for that to be true, you know, I guess. It, it had to give live birth each time and eat and eat and then eat its uh parent like, like every time so there's no evidence <laughs> yeah well maya says uh, i'm totally cool with idiots chasing non-existent animals uh as long as they leave my tax dollars out of it i get bothered when they start lying about it and being real and infecting other idiots um i mean yeah it's there's always going to be some of that like spreading the infection of stupid although i feel like there are some people who are just going to believe in stupid things no matter what like they'll just come up with their own stupid things to believe i'm not aware of too many times when there has been tax dollars spent on cryptids per se although there are some places where um laws have been passed to protect the environment in which a cryptid is supposed to live in which case i guess you could just argue well i mean it's an environmental protection i mean you should be as okay with that as you are with environmental protections for other reasons so i mean if if you want a forest protected and it's protected for a, a silly reason does it matter i don't know maybe maybe not um let's see i saw joseph grant i saw a youtube video who claims he was a, a bigfoot had sex with him um i do remember that video i also saw that video it was very strange. It was a man who claimed to have been essentially raped by a Bigfoot. It was, I believe the Bigfoot, I believe he said the Bigfoot was female. So I, I don't think that uh, it had a big dick as Joseph Grant <laughs> wonders. Um, yeah. Um, I used to, to ghost hunt for five years, never found one from Illuminati Hunt. Yeah, well, they're, they are stealthy. Actually, 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 I actually did. I I went on ghost hunt one with my friends. It was, it was, it was like, I was actually scared. Yeah. <laughs> I, really scared. I I guess I guess I really put up in my mind more than actually. Well, the, you know. the thing is, ghost hunts always seem to take place in creepy locations at night. They don't bring a lot of like light. Like you're not bringing floodlights to your ghost hunt. I think they're really more of like an exercise in just trying to scare yourself. It's like. It's like the reality TV version of a horror movie, right? Like, okay, if you like horror movies, you might like going on a ghost hunt and walking around this creepy building in the dark and, you know, your imagination gets heightened and every little noise and bump and draft becomes significant. And, you know, there's other people who are doing the same thing and feeding into this group idea that it's creepy and there might be ghosts. And you know what? I, I see the appeal. Honestly, if someone was like, oh, hey, we're going to go ghost hunting and I don't have to pay for any of this equipment, I'd go ghost hunting. I don't expect to see anything, but I think I'd have fun. Yeah, we, we, just, we just brought a, we just brought like a, an old fashioned, like Kodak camera in this, a car. <laughs> nice. I would, I would want to go with one of those groups that's really well equipped and they've got like the spirit box and the little like infrared cameras and all this stuff, like, yeah, we went all out. I'm like, okay, sure. Um, Eric Viertaler says it would be funny to take a dinosaur denier to Jurassic World ride at Universal Studios or a flat earther to space. I would prefer to take a dinosaur denier on an actual uh, paleontology dig for vertebrate paleontology. Because, like, what do you do when obvious bones come out of the ground? Like, what, what, what is that? Like, la la la, I don't see anything. La 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 la, you, you planned this. Yeah, you you you, you plan this you, you, you plan, like you plan this before we got got here, right? Um, apparently there's a flat earther named Karen B who claims to have had sex with Bigfoot. This is 
You know what? There's also people who claim that the same thing about ghosts. And I feel like maybe people are just having really vivid dreams. I don't know. That seems like a more likely explanation. Or like the people that people that thought uh, aliens built the stuff. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Like ancient alien stuff. Yeah. Actually, uh, funny story about that. I actually wonder about that Al- A- aliens. You know, you know, because you know, aliens might exist. You know, was, we don't know positively. Nobody could exist. You know. And I was thinking. Like, I, I wonder if. I wonder if back in the time the aliens were the gods. You know, they divided the planet. They're like, okay, we we'll take North, we'll, we'll take North America, <laughs> or we'll, you take 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 Egypt, be be raw. We'll take we'll take over here, be be Yahweh. We'll, we'll be over here, be Zeus. You know, like yeah, or we'll be in India to be the elephant god. So like, I'll say this: I I don't find that a particularly compelling argument. I haven't seen evidence that would make me think that ancient alien stuff is true. But look, it's. It's less ridiculous than Young Earth creationism, so yeah. hey. Um, let's see, there was something I wanted to, uh, didn't Trey, so there's been some discussion in the chat about T-Rex and feathers. Okay, so, and Trey the Explainer did do a video about it, and um, it was not debunked. What is the case is that we have recently found um, some small skin patches from various parts of T-Rex. None of them show feathers. However, they were all in areas where feathers are known to have not occurred on some dinosaurs that also had feathers. So the question as to whether or not an adult T-Rex had feathers is currently still up in the air, although we don't have any direct evidence for feathers, and we do have direct evidence for not feathers. Maybe it could be like not feathers, but it could be maybe like like down, like down, maybe like. Well, that would be included under the feather umbrella. Okay. When when paleontologists talk about feathers and dinosaurs, basically they're talking about any in uh, filamentous integument that's homologous with modern feathers. So, like the spines on a, yeah. on a Cetacosaurus or it's, the uh, the downy it's... stuff that you would cover like a. Uh, yeah, like I don't know. and stuff, stuff like so that. I don't know the exact family tree of dinosaurs that well, but I think I think they're more related to the feather ones and the non-feather ones. I think, and their family. I forget how how far away, away they are connected to like the raptors and the stuff and the avian dinosaurs. Right. Well, so I mean, how closely related is always a question. I, I like to give how closely related things are in approximate diversions time. That's hard to do for dinosaurs, so it's. Eh. But um, basically, something like Triceratops is about as far away from a bird as you can get while still being a dinosaur, whereas T. Rex is quite close related to birds. Um, and Eric Vertel says, from my understanding, it, I assume meaning uh, T. Rex, was feathered on the back of the head, arms, and the end of the tail. Uh, are you? A, are you? By the way, are you a T. Rex? What, what dinosaur are you? I'm a Ceratosaurus. Okay. Um, uh, and. Eric also uh, follows up with, I believe they talked about it when we saw Victoria the T-Rex, which we did go. We went to, in person, Eric and I, go see uh, Victoria the T-Rex. It's in uh, Phoenix right now. Uh, so the thing about that is that those are the places where, one, feathers are most likely, the head, back, uh, down through the tail, and the arms. But they're also the places where we don't have skin impressions. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> um, so it's, it's very up in the air. Every place where we would expect to have feathers, we don't have skin impressions. And everywhere we have skin impressions, we don't have feathers. So, eh. yeah, it's just still up in the air. I, I like to lean towards there having been some feathering, I, but I will not balk at reconstructions where there are no feathers. Yeah, so. speaking of that, it's, it's, science is weird sometimes, you know, definitely before the, that comfort back before that conf- that the controversy about the placement of the ther- theropod dinosaurs you know i always wondered how come the bird hip dinosaurs uh, the lizard hip dinosaurs that became birds aren't are, are with the bird hip bird hip group <laughs> like yeah well so one thing that's kind of unfortunate is that they were named after their hip structure which is not as characteristically different as some other aspects of their anatomy so for instance um the bird hip dinosaurs the real big characteristic is that they have a bone called the predentary bone there's a single uh, center line bone that's unpaired that is anterior to the tip of the dentary, and it forms the support structure for a keratinous beak. And they are the only animals with a predentary bone. And uh, 
yeah, that's way more diagnostic for uh, the so-called bird hip dinosaurs. So it's sort of an accident of history that we talk about the hip so much. We probably shouldn't, but yeah. Oh well. Yeah, it's also I thought recently I've been thinking, you know, too bad the guy who made vent, not vent dinosaurs who found dinosaurs and named them named them lizards instead of birds, like they, they named terrible birds. Oh, he would never have called them birds because he was very much against the idea that birds had any reptilian ancestry. Because that was yeah. Richard Owen, and Richard Owen was a staunch creationist throughout his entire life. In fact, he, like many modern creationists, was known to lie through his teeth in order to promote creationism and never admit when he was wrong. But I think he was—I think he might have been the oldest creationist too. Because I don't think. He, he oh yeah, he was. But because he, I think he—he he was the like the. Uh, well, he might have been the guy that my pastor got his stuff from, maybe because you know he was the guy that thought you know he. They gotta recycle stuff. Okay, dinosaurs are gone now. Time for mammals now. Like, tch. yeah, yeah, that's called progressive creation. And um, and Richard Owen was a progressive creationist. He thought that uh, God would create various faunas, and then uh, he would improve upon that fauna after replacing them. He get bored, get bored, whatever. Like, okay, yeah, I'm bored now. <laughs> it's it's a little strange to think about. Like, what does that say about God as an entity? But okay, whatever. Um. Let's see. And then uh, Stephanie Wilson said, uh, I like the suggestion of feathers on, like on an ostrich where the legs are scaly and the feathers are on the bodies, or like an emu. Um, yeah, I mean, that's one of the possibilities. Like I said, those are, we know that there are certain areas where certain dinosaurs, including, you know, um, paleonate birds, like uh, ostriches, emus, rheas, stuff like that, where they're less likely to have feathers. And those are the places where we have skin impressions on the places where it's least likely for T-Rex to have had feathers. So it's everywhere where we would like to check for feathers, we can't. It's so far. There may well be new uh, fossil finds found. Um, all this reminds me of FTFE's fans accusing Dapper of being a naked T-Rex. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, yeah, that reminds me. When I first subscribed to your channel, I, I subscribed to the wrong channel at first. Yeah, there's two Dapper Dinos on YouTube. Uh, the other one does coding tutorials. And, and, and uh, he, like, yeah, like, 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 this guy has, like, 10,000 subscribers. Like, wow. Like, oh, the guy has, like, 1,000 subscribers. So... <laughs> Yeah, um, I did not know that channel existed when I chose this channel name. If I hadn't known, I might have changed the channel name slightly. I don't know. It's, it's too late now, really. Um, so there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, Emu is something not to mess with. Uh, just ask the Aussie, says the evil Scotsman. That's true. Did you know that the, the Australian government lost a war against emus? I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they tried to... The sea, so the emus were, they are, uh, agricultural pests. And so there was this big campaign to just decimate their numbers, just really bring down their numbers of emus. And so, like, military elements were going in and just trying to just mow down emus, but they couldn't actually make any significant dent in their numbers since they just gave up. They were like, all right, I guess the emus win. Um, <clears throat> welcome back to you, Lane. Uh, then Zeus Carthus says, I thought I was an atheist until I realized I'm a god. Yes, I'm, that's definitely very likely. Uh, yeah, and the, the Romans might <laughs> disagree, says the evil Scotsman. Yeah, probably. All right, well, I'm going to ask for any more questions that you guys have for either me or Lamont, and I think we're going to um, get some channel announcements in and anything you want to plug so uh, we'll, we'll give a few. Um, and Eric Rittler has said that Cody had taken down his firmament video. Maybe too much backlash from Flat Earthers. Yeah, Flat Earthers get really butthurt really fast. They, they get triggered by lots of stuff. Um, very strange. I don't... Like, they seem to get really upset about things. I'm just like, why do you care? <laughs> Doesn't matter. But um, let's see. So for channel news... Right now, my plan is to premiere a video on Thursday and have the next episode of Leading Earth Creationism be next Thursday, but that might change because the person I'm talking to may want to do it this Thursday, in which case I will push the video premiere back. Um, uh, Tuesday. Uh, oh, we have a $2 super chat. Uh, what is your opinion on turtles? I like turtles. 
Yeah. No, no, yeah, I like turtles too. Cool. I don't. I don't. I really don't know if they ever decided decide if they're diapsid or anapsids anymore. Right now, it's looking very much like they are diapsids. Uh, we have some fossils from uh, the Triassic that look very much like a diapsid uh, stem turtle. Um, so right now, there's, there's a strong lean towards them being diapsids. There's even some question as to whether or not they might be uh, stem diapsids or whether they might even be archosauromorphs. So there's some question there. Uh, the fossil record for turtles has actually been filling in recently, uh, just like many other lineages where you get... Um, in the last few decades, we've gotten a lot more information from um, the fossil record about exactly how they evolved. So um, I would highly recommend looking into some of that stuff. I don't have the names of all the forms off the top of my head, but like we now know that it was probably the, um, the plastron, the bottom part of a turtle shell, that evolved first, and the carapace, or the top part, came later. Uh, we have some transitional forms showing how the shoulder girdle ended up going under the rib cage, which is the case for modern turtles, which is unique to turtles. Um, we also found out that a giant uh, pleuroneer turtle in South America uh, had weird little horns on its shell. So, I mean, I say little, they were little compared to the shell, but the shell was like the size of a Buick, so whatever. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, turtles are really cool. They're very important for biogeography because the distribution of cryptodeer and pleurodeer turtles helps provide supporting evidence for the, um, the separation of Gondwana and Laurasia during the uh, Jurassic period. So tortoise, tortoise, tortoises live forever, not forever, but they let, tortoises are old, old animals, aren't they? Or tortoise, uh, turtles? Yeah, tor tortoises can live for centuries. So yeah, turtles are an interesting, an interesting group. They are very unusual. Uh, their anatomy is unusual, and they've been around since before the dinosaurs, basically. Uh, so yeah, turtles are cool. I like turtles. Um, I might actually try to do some kind of... I might try to do some, maybe like a Things That Aren't Dinosaurs episode or something about uh, turtles and their evolution. Uh, don't hold me to that. I'm not sure. Uh, my next episode for that is still... It's barely even in the planning stage. Uh, so I guess that's a channel announcement too. Is um, there's going to be more things that aren't dinosaurs, but I'm not sure what I wanted to do next. Uh, there's been suggestions of doing a Dimetrodon or other Pelicosaurs. Um, uh, turtles are a suggestion. Um, some other therapsids, or well, not thera well, other synapsids, including some therapsids, have been uh, bandied about. Uh, like maybe Dinocephalians or Vergonopsids or something. Dicynodons. I'm not really sure. Uh, and the and to answer Eric's question, he has asked in chat, Allosaurus. Oh, your favorite di Allosaurus. Come on, man. Not not Ceratosaurus. Why? Well, I, I didn't know that well, that wasn't until today. Uh, <sighs> all right. Well, you need to look into Ceratosaurus and and at least give it a serious consideration for replacing Allosaurus. Well, yeah, well, Allosaurus is my favorite since elementary school. <laughs> well, you know, we all have crazy ideas in elementary school. Don't don't let elementary school rule your life. Um, all right, so, and uh, Lamont, you have a, is it Talking Time with Caffeine is the name, I believe, of your... Yes, that's my podcast. Okay. Uh, hoping, uh, I'm in talks right now to get Dapper Dinosaur on there again, hopefully sometime in March, maybe. Uh, but, yeah, and I think that's pretty pretty likely. But on Leap, on Leap Day, coming up next Saturday, on the 29th, was, you know, it happens every once every every thousand years or four years actually but i'm, I'm gonna have uh jackson weed and guts and guts and erica given on my channel to talk about primates which is gonna be pretty cool because those are two very knowledgeable people uh if you don't remember erica she has been on this channel three times i believe she did a leaving young earth creationism on this channel uh she did a uh she was on for not the last episode of kent with bent but the one before that and she also did a hangout with uh, Cheshire and me, where we mostly just hung out and talked, but there was also a video we watched a little bit of, so, eh, you know. Yeah. Um, I either watch more of Kent with Bent, but I'm usually at work when, that, when they air. Oh, um, <laughs> well, the reruns. I, I feel like they're not as fun as reruns as they are live, but they're yeah. still pretty, some of them are still pretty good li are, as reruns. Um, the one with Erica, of course, you should watch that one, because Erica's cool. 
Um, but we, every once in a while, I have a guest on for Kent with Bent. Um, one thing that I, I try not to have more than one extra guest on beyond Bent, though, because it starts to really slow down the process of actually getting through the video. <laughs> yeah. That's what you, you have to drink or pause. Like, okay, wrong. Pause. Two, two minutes. Two minutes, two seconds later. Wrong again. Wrong again. Wrong again. Yeah. Oh, and Illuminati Don says, what about Tennis Trophius? I think Tennis Trophius is cool. Um, the museum near me actually has a model of it on their little waterfall display. Um, it's still a little bit mysterious, just like how aquatic was it? Exactly how did it live? Because its neck doesn't seem to have been very flexible. But yeah, it's one of those really weird Triassic animals, because the Triassic was just, just bizarre. Do you have any uh, thoughts on Tennis Trophius? Never heard of it until today, so... Oh, okay. Well, there you go. You should, again, uh... Again, I wasn't in you today. Yep, you should check out uh, Tennis Trophius. I believe it, it was spelled correctly, although I don't remember off that, uh, like, T-A-N-Y-S-T-R-O-P-H-E-U-S, Tennis Trophius. Check it out. It's got a big, long neck and sharp little pointy teeth. So, um... Now, when does Talking Time with Caffeine normally air? What is the normal schedule for you? Usually... Uh... Saturday, usually Saturday afternoons, or Saturday evenings, unless I'm with an Australian guest, then it's Saturday mornings. <laughs> right. Yep. Um. So there you go. So if you uh if you like Lamont and you want to see more of his stuff, check that out. He's had a number of interesting guests. Uh, I recently saw one where you had um James from Modern Day Debate on. You've yeah. had Erica on before. Um. I've had Jackson Weed on three times. I've had wow. Uh, Tony, uh, Tony from Kristen taught me real science on a few times, and uh, oh yeah, Tony Reed, right? Yeah, I've so had, yeah, my Shrino, I've got, I've had a lot, a lot of different people on my channel. Yeah, so um, Lamont can get some pretty good guests, so go go check them out if uh, if you're interested. Um, and uh, just a reminder, if you really appreciate what I do here, we have ways to support the channel beyond just super chats and likes and stuff. But again. If that's not something that's in your budget, then please do not do it. But if it is in your budget and you do would like to support the channel, uh, there's a Patreon page. There is a Amazon wish list where you can get things directly for me that I either would like to have or would that that would directly help uh, with the channel. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, you you inspired me like my own Amazon wish list too. <laughs> I, I've actually had some people get me some stuff from my Amazon wish list, so. The, the microphone that I'm using right now, I got from my Amazon wish list from uh, a fan of mine. I got, I, got my, I got mine for Christmas. <laughs> nice. Um, there's also a merch store. So if you want a dap if you want the Dapper Dinosaur on a mug, a t-shirt, a tank top, a hoodie, a canvas bag, if you want a canvas print to hang on your wall, if you want a wall tapestry, a blanket, a pillow, whatever, I've got something on there for you. I think the only thing that Teespring offers that I don't have available is uh, leggings. I couldn't figure out a good way to do leggings, so I just didn't try. Um, uh, let's see, Tyranids are the best dinosaurs, hands down, <laughs> from Xanos Carthage. Um, well, we're going to have to disagree about Tyranids being dinosaurs, but Tyranids are pretty cool. What um, are Tyranids? Uh, Tyranids are an alien species from outside the galaxy in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Oh. Uh... Yeah. They're, they're the inspiration for the Zerg from StarCraft. In fact, the Zerg are almost exactly carbon copies of the Tyranids. I, but, I, I, I've always been a more Warcraft than Starcraft. Okay. Well, this is Warhammer 40k, so it's not either of them. But Blizzard took heavy inspiration for Starcraft from the Warhammer 40k universe. Um, so much so that I, I'm surprised that um, Games Workshop, the owners of the Warhammer uh, franchise, never tried to sue them for it. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. So there we go. That is some of the ways if you would like to support me. Um, if you have any other ideas for how you would like to support me, you can let me know. Um, there are always possibilities. And if you don't, then don't. I don't want your money if you, if you need it for yourself. So thumb up helps sometimes. Yeah, ex actually, uh, thumbs up really do help. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, share the video if you can. And uh, I think that's going to be it. Any final words? I guess my catchphrase, never stop learning and enjoy the randomness. All right. Well, there you go. Thank you, everyone, for stopping by. And thank you for watching. I will talk to all of you guys later.